Welcome once again to explainingcomputers.com. In many previous videos, I've looked at these things. SSDs, including installing an SSD as a replacement for a hard drive in a desktop computer or a laptop computer. And more recently, I've looked at the M.2 SSDs that plug directly into some modern motherboards. Now, there is no doubt at all that SSDs are faster and more physically robust than traditional spinning hard drives. However, I do know that many people worry greatly about the life expectancy of an SSD. Should we really trust our data to a device like this? And so, in this video, I'm going to address SSD life expectancy head on. Today, almost all SSDs store data in NAND flash memory cells. In case you're wondering, NAND is not an acronym, but refers to a logic circuit called a NOT AND gate. Meanwhile, flash is a form of computer memory that retains its contents when power is removed. However, the key limitation of flash memory is that its cells can only be programmed and erased a limited number of times. Depending on the SSD and its specific technology, the maximum number of program erase or PE cycles can be as low as 500 and as high as 100,000. All early SSDs were based on SLC or single level cell technology. This stores one bit of information per cell, with modern SLC SSDs rated at between 50,000 and 100,000 PE cycles. However, SLC is very expensive, and today SLC SSDs are only manufactured for use in servers and other enterprise applications. Following SLC came multi-level cell or MLC, which stores two bits of data per NAND flash cell. Storing more data per cell decreases the cost of an SSD, but also decreases its writing speed and makes it wear out more rapidly. Today, MLC drives come in two variants, Enterprise or EMLC, as well as end-user MLC drives. The difference between EMLC and MLC drives is not that significant, save that the Enterprise drives have a lower write speed, which is gentler on the cells, so causing them to last longer. Today, EMLC SSDs are typically rated at between 10,000 and 30,000 PE cycles, while end-user MLC drives are typically rated at between 3,000 and 10,000 cycles. After MLC, we got TLC or triple level cell, which stores three bits of data per cell. While this further lowers SSD price per bit, it again does so at the cost of cell endurance, with TLC SSDs having typical PE ratings of somewhere between 500 and 2,000 cycles. In case you're wondering, Quad-level cell or QLC SSDs are expected on the market fairly soon. In recent years, we've also seen the launch of new technologies including 3D NAND and vertical NAND or VNAND SSDs. These stack NAND flash cells on the chip in order to improve capacity and in the process increase the number of potential PE cycles. However, it's important to appreciate that 3D NAND and VNAND are complementary technology developments, as 3D NAND and VNAND SSDs are still produced in either SLC, MLC or TLC variants. Note that the PE cycle figures presented earlier in this video took account of the latest MLC and TLC 3D NAND and VNAND drives. All modern SSDs use a process called wear levelling to even out the PE cycles inflicted on each memory cell across the drive. This is particularly important because flash memory cells have to be erased in blocks, which means that data has to be constantly moved around an SSD into free space. SSDs inevitably wear out faster the less free space they have available. Imagine, for example, a 120GB SSD that is 90% full and has a rating of 1000 PE cycles. Manufacturers typically work on the assumption of end users writing up to 20GB of data in a day. And so here, if this quantity of data was written and erased from the 12GB of free space every 24 hours, its cells would hit 1000 PE cycles in just 600 days. 
But if the drive were only 80% full, it would last for 1,200 days, and so on. A key takeaway here is that it's good practice to leave adequate free space on an SSD to preserve its life expectancy. Keeping such free space available is known as over-provisioning, and some SSDs achieve it internally by including additional memory cells that cannot be accessed by the user. Meanwhile, other SSDs are supplied with software that allows the user to implement over-provisioning by leaving some space on the drive unformatted. For example, Samsung's Magician software leaves about 10% of an SSD's capacity unallocated in order to increase the life expectancy of the drive. To allow users to gauge probable life expectancy, SSD manufacturers provide a rating that indicates the minimum quantity of data that can be written before a drive fails. For enterprise SSDs, and as shown here for some SanDisk drives, such ratings may be expressed as a minimum number of petabytes written, or PBW, with a petabyte being 1024 terabytes. Alternatively, Enterprise SSDs can have their endurance expressed in drive writes per day, or DWPD, which is a measure of how many times a drive can be filled to full capacity and erased for every day of its warranty period. For end-user SSDs, endurance ratings are typically expressed in terabytes written, or TBW. Here, MLC SSDs typically achieve higher ratings than TLC hardware for the same capacity of drive, although Intel's latest 3D TLC technology does buck that trend. As we would expect, we also see that the larger the drive, the greater the TBW figure. If you are worried about maximising SSD life expectancy, you should therefore purchase the largest drive you can afford and leave it with as much free space as possible. This said, Given that most modern SSDs are able to withstand a good 100 terabytes written or more, it's safe to presume that any modern drive in a reasonable usage scenario will last for a great many years, and for at least as long as the other components in a typical end-user PC. SSDs are getting better and better. Indeed, only a few days ago, Intel launched the first drive based on its new 3D XPoint technology, rather than traditional NAND flash memory cells. As such innovations accrue, SSD life expectancy will also continue to improve. This said, my final message to you on the subject of SSD life expectancy has to be, don't panic. Now, absolutely, the flash memory cells used in all end-user SSDs can sustain no more than about 10,000 program erase PE cycles, and in many consumer drives that's down to maybe only a few thousand PE cycles, and that can sound, at first sort of instance, rather alarming. But, as we've also seen in this video, most consumer, most client SSDs can still sustain at least 100 terabytes written before they fail. And that means for most users in most situations, your SSD will last many years and potentially over a decade. So, should we trust our data to SSDs today? Well, in my view, yes, absolutely. If with the normal provider, you should never trust any data to one single drive. Any data you actually care about, you want to be there when you come back again, should always be stored on at least two drives, and ideally at least three. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.